السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ الحمد للہ علیہ نعمت الاسلامی و کفا بہ نعمہ آل پریز اینڈ گریٹیٹیوڈ بی ٹو اللہ سبحان و تعالیٰ آن ہز بلیسنگ آف اسلام وی سفائز ایز اے بلیسنگ آئی ہیو ٹو ویلکم یو آن دا ٹوینٹی سیون پارا وی آر ہاف وے تھرو اینڈ ویل کمپلیٹ ٹو ڈے وی آر ایٹ سور رحمان اینڈ ویل بگن ود آئٹ نمبر ٹوینٹی سکس سور رحمان اوبیسی از اے بیوٹیفل سورا اٹس آلسو کال دی عروس القرا وچ از دی قرآن اور عروس القرآن وچ از میننگ لٹلی دا برائڈ آف قرآن بیکاز اٹس لاٹ آف ردم اٹس آلموسٹ لائک آلموسٹ لائک میوزیکل اینڈ رحمان ون آف دا کامن ایٹریبیوٹس نیم آف اللہ یوز دا موسٹ مرسیفل سو آؤز باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم کل من علیہ فان Everything on it has to perish. وَيَبْقَى وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ ذُو الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِكْرَامِ And the face of your Rabb will abide forever in its majesty and glory. So this is, uh, these are the ayahs which are addressed to both uh, jinn and men. And uh, uh, what it is, it's really telling them is that everything on it, which means everything on this that is uh, inhabiting this earth, they are bound to pass away. All, cre- all creation of Allah will come to an end. And what will really remain? What will remain will be, as they say, وَيَبْقَى وَجْهُ وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ وَجْ literally means a face. So your face will rub, which means that it's only the zat of your rub that is going to remain. The face representing the presence, the presence of Allah will remain. The being of Allah will be there. So those of us and all those, all those who wish to survive forever, they must develop a close relationship with Allah. One who, who is going to remain, remain forever. Therefore, instead of just um, investing and loving this very transient and temporary world, our love and our striving must be for the hereafter, which is permanent. So which of the bounties of your Rabb will you deny? All those in the heavens and the earth besiege him for their needs. Each day some mighty task engages him. So all creation of Allah is dependent upon him. He holds the key of all treasures, the risk that we have, the life that we have, the mafira that people will get, the jannah that people will get. Giver of everything is Allah. Even those who deny Allah, they are dependent upon him for their existence. If their heart stops beating, if their next breath doesn't come, their life will also come to an end. So Allah is engaged, he is involved in every moment. So after creating this universe, he didn't really sit back and become detached from it, but instead he is very much involved in its running. Nothing happens on its own, but there is a creator, a sustainer behind every event, whether it is small or it is it's large. It, there is every event, event that is taking place over here. Which leaf will fall today? Which blade of grass will grow? Which insect will get its sustenance? And from where it will get its sustenance? He is monitoring, he is sanctioning, sanctioning. He is overlooking everything that is happening in this universe. He gives life, he causes death. Our health, our illness, our richness, our poverty are all in his hand. So which of the bounties of your Rabb will you deny? All these from, you know, that the microscope to the telescope that revealed to us. Yet people say that this all came into existence on its own. That no one is monitoring, no one is, is administrating it. The universe and all its life is on auto. That it came into existence on its own and it just blindly follows the law. Is this, how, is this how people will deny the creative abilities of Allah? Soon we will deal with you, O oh you two heavy species, which means addressing to the jinn and men. So addressing to the two burdens on this earth, men and jinn, that he will call them and he will take accountability of all men and jinn. But often people have no time to think about this great hisab that we are that that we are saying and we are, you know, what we are saying and what we are doing. That Allah will take hisab of that. So which of the namaths of your Rabb will you deny? Which namath, you know, what is the namath in this reminder about this hisab? Well, the namath is that man still has time. This is a great blessing that we have time to get ourselves ready for it. We, have we got a good amal nama so that, so that we can save ourselves from this great anxiety of this day of judgment? O oh, assembly of jinn and men, if you are able to penetrate beyond the realms of the heaven, heavens and the earth, then penetrate. You cannot penetrate without power. Some commentators have taken this to mean as referring to the power that we need to break free from the gravity force and reach to the outer space. Other commentators equally have said it means that like man has, uh, has a form, uh, you know, and came into form in, from non-existence, uh, and they are coming into existence, uh, so this existence will also come to an end one day, 
and man will escape the boundaries of matter and time. The life, the physical life that we are aware of, that will cease to exist and then all these rules of the universe will cease to apply on us and Allah has, um, you know, Allah has power, uh, you know, uh, to, uh, to, to, to finish all, the, the, all his existence, the, the existence that he has created for, the, for his creatures. Like a fa flame extinguishes, the breath of life also comes to an end. So which of the bounties of your Rabb will you deny? A flame of fire and smoke will be sent against you and you will not be able to defend. So different types of azab being described over here, the Jahannam also being described. And so which of the nameth of your Rabb will you deny? What nameth is there in azab? What is the nameth in the azab of Jahannam? Even the knowledge of, 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 of Jahannam is a nameth. It's a great blessing because as they say, Four, four, uh, you know, uh, four uh, born is four armed. Four warmed is four, four armed. People can prepare now. People can prepare now and not follow a path which is a path which leads to such a dreadful place. So when the sky will be split apart and and will become rosy like red hides. So which of the blessings of your Rabb will you deny? The state of heart will be shown on the faces of people. By looking at someone's face, his temperament, his nature is visible. Face is, uh, is almost like an index to our heart. So on that day, neither man will be questioned about his sin nor jinn. So which of the signs of your Rabb will you deny? The guilty ones will be recognized by their marks and will be seized by the forelock and feet. So which of the signs of your Rabb will you deny? What is the name in describing this dire straits of Mujrims? What is the what is the what is the name of over here? What is the blessing over here? Because for one against whom injustice has been committed, he will get a satisfaction of seeing how now justice is being done on the day of judgment. A man who kills hundred children, what punishment can people give to him? Take one life for the hundred families that are destroyed. This is no justice. So on this day, justice will be done and the aggrieved will see that the punishment is given to the criminals in relation to the zulm that they had afflicted. This is hell that the guilty people, that the guilty people deny. They shall go around between it and between the hot boiling water. So which of the bounties of your Rabb will you deny? And for the one who is fearful of, sta of standing before his Rabb, there are two gardens. You know, we, this is a, Again, a talk of psychology, the fear, fear of many types and fear has many types and varieties, beginning with the phantom fear that people have, the fears of shadows that do not exist, like people say we fear Drakkar or evil spirits or, or, or monsters. This is just imagination. Imagination sometimes make people coward. Then there are other fears, the fear of height, the phobia, fear of water, fear of clouds. These are just phobias. These are just fear. Then there are fears that are real and beneficial. The fear of failing, the fear of loss of reputation, the fear of breaking of the law, such fears are positive and make people disciplined. Now, if this good fear is not just limited to the world, but is extended to the hereafter, that man is also fear, fearful of breaking the law of Allah, then such fear is not negative. It's not a harmful fear. In fact, such fear is a good fear. Because just being fearless is not a good sign. This is not a sign of bravery. Fear of death, there is a fear of death so that people don't commit suicide after every disappointment. And Quran at many places instructs that this fear of Allah is a great blessing. Those who fear Allah, they are blessed people. This is a great nameth of Allah. Hence, fear of Allah makes man careful. And as a result, he becomes beneficial to himself and to beneficials to, to, to the other. He gives water to a, to a thirsty dog. For him, this is not something insignificant or, or, or a lowly thing. So fear of Allah has huge benefit. It prevents people from becoming inhuman, from being insensitive and irrational. And this is what taqwa is all about. Taqwa, God consciousness, fear of God. It makes people do amal. Those people who fear Allah benefit the world. And in the hereafter, they will have two gardens. Why two gardens? Maybe one for jinn, maybe one for men, maybe two is used to highlight the multiple, you know, that there'll be multiple gardens. So which of the blessings of your Rabb will you deny? Both have branches. So which of the blessings of, the, of your Rabb will you deny? In both there are flowing springs. When Jannat is referred in Quran, there's a zikr of spring. 
rivers, fountains, you know that flowing water, it has feeling of abundance, the unending supplies, the calmness that is there, the, the sound of falling water. So which of the blessings of your Rabb will you deny? In both, there are two kinds of fruits. Two kinds, maybe our type, the one that we are familiar with in this world, and the other one which are unique for, for Jannah. So maybe there are two types of fruits, one for human beings and one for jinn. So which of the bounties of your Rabb will you deny? Reclining on coaches, couches whose lining will be of thick silk and fruits plucked from the two gardens will be within reach. So indicating that when people get over here to Jannah, they'll be sitting in these, these beautiful couches, no effort, no exertion will be needed. Uh, it's almost like a concept of ultimate luxury, right? That's what's being projected over here. Now, we can only get ideas based on what we know. Right? What we don't know, I mean, obviously, we, can't, we cannot really explain anything about it, right? So the real delights of, of paradise cannot be described because none of us has experienced them. So the real delight would be only known when people reach to the paradise. So which of the blessings of your Rabb will you deny? In them there will be those who lower their gaze, whom neither man, neither a man has touched before, nor a jinn. Companions for men, their attributes, modesty, higher. If men were attracted to immodesty, if men were attracted to brazen, brazenness and shamelessness, then that zikr would have come over here. But in Jannah will be beautiful women. Uh, you know, it would have been said in Jannah, there will be beautiful women, they will be tempting you, they will have these inviting looks. But no, it's, that's not what it said. What it said, instead, they will be lowering their gaze with haya, pure, chaste, according to the, to the nature which man truly desires. So which of the blessings of your Rabb will you deny? As though they were rubies and corals such precious, such valued, such treasured, and protected like a treasure, like, you know, you, you protect a diamond and pearl they, and keep them well guarded. Similar protection and care to be given to women. So which of the bounties of your Rabb will you deny? Is there any reward for goodness other than goodness? Whoever does any good deeds, he will get a better return for it. He who does amal beautifully, then Allah is very appreciative and gives him a better return for such deeds. So which of the blessings of your Rabb will you deny? And besides these, there are two other gardens. So which of the bounties of your Rabb will you deny? Dark green. Dark green with what? Dark green with foliage. You know, there will be thick foliage. Almost like an unending Jannat, right? Constant discussion of Jannat. Almost like, it's like a, in a mirror, you see another mirror. You see another paradise. So which of the bounties of your Rabb will you deny? In both, there are two springs gushing forth. Maybe like mountain springs as they are gushing or maybe like, like fountains. So which of the bounties of your Rabb will you deny? In both, there are fruits and date palms and pomegranates. So pomegranates and dates uh, are fu fruits of paradise as mentioned over here. So which of the bounties of your Rabb will you deny? In them will be women selected and perfect. Not just physically, but with akhlaq, with kardar, with etiquette, with finesse, with elegance, and with poise. So which of the bounties of your Rabb will you deny? The hoors staying in pavilion. The hoors staying in pavilions. If we just uh, for a moment leave, leave aside our egos, what is stated over here is completely natural. It's not something which is a, a degrading thing for women. So which of the blessings of your Rabb will you deny? Whom neither a man might have touched before, nor a jinn. So the, the qualities of these, these hoods will be, they will be chaste and purity. These are the attributes that are considered worthy only by, by Sharif men. So which of the blessing of your Rabb will you deny? Reclining on green couch, couches, and exceptionally beautiful carpets. So which of the blessings of your Rabb will you deny? Blessed is the name of your Rabb, the Rabb of Majesty, the Rabb of Honor. Now we begin with Surah Waqiyah and uh, uh, this is a Makkan Surah, uh, a Surah which Hazrat Umar first heard and he accepted Islam. Bismillahir Rahman Rahim is a Waqatil Waqiyah. When the eminent event comes to pass, Laisa le Waqtiha Kaziba and there will be no one to deny its occurrence. So Waqiyah, Waqiyah is a name of Qayyama. Uh, to warn about this great and eventful day has been the basic message of all the messengers. The qida which changes the amal of people is a strong belief in the hereafter. It activates, it activates the conscience of man. With conviction on hereafter, the boundaries of Sharia become important. That one who cannot, the one who cannot do as one pleases, that's something that comes inside. You cannot just do how you please. 
or rather one does only those things which are uh, which are free from sin with which, which are within the boundaries of islam abasing exalting on the day of judgment the standard of izzat and zillat will be completely different in, from this world in this world the criteria of of uh, exalting or izzat is in many things in trade in art in culture in scientific progress in building a new beautiful home or a building in technology but in the eyes of allah the millions of tons of of pyramid which may be very beautiful is nothing but dust now there are qualities of the akhlaq and character that will have weight on that day the strength of iman will be the criteria of success on that day the real value will be on iman and on amle saleh when the earth will be jolted with terrible jolting and the mountains are grounded to powder until they will become scattered dust so the earthquake that will that will come before the day of judgment it will be unending now the grading of all people will start all the familiar sites and the standards will be abolished new sites and new standards will be raised then the grading will start the position holders the successful the failures and you will be divided into three categories as for the people of the right how lucky are the people of the right and of the people of the left how rich wretched are the people of the left left and the foremost are the foremost so three categories that described over here people will be split into three groups the right people people on the right side of the arsh of allah they will be given their amal nama in their right hand the second group will be on the left side of the arsh of allah and they will be such unfortunate people they will be given their amal nama in the left hand and they will be destined for the hell fire and then the sabiqun the foremost the position holders the people who do the who who are fast in doing good deeds people who are fast in leaving the you know in leaving sin people who are quick in acquiring knowledge and putting it to amal they run and compete with you know in good deeds these are the these are the third categories the sabiqun the foremost being described over here those are the one blessed with ne- with nearness in gardens of bliss numerous among the earlier people and few among the later ones the opinion of uh, scholars is that the awwalin and akhirin as mentioned in quran over here uh, these are the people from the ummat of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they will be reclining on thrones woven of with gold uh, with gold thread reclining on them facing one another facing one another means not that they are literally they'll be facing but it means closeness there will be no hard feeling for 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 them there will be no hate there will be no anger there will be no resentment or ill feeling because if hate and anger and in feeling are there even in the best surroundings and the best food one really cannot enjoy and appreciate that immortal boys will rotate around them with goblets and beakers and cups of pure drink from which they will neither suffer headache nor will they be intoxicated so no bad smell no bitterness no hangover nor will people become drunk and with fruits that they choose and meat of birds that they desire and for them there will be hoors having lovely big eyes so when the zikr of uh, of enjoyment there's always zikr of companions you know mentioned in in quran because without companion no matter where one is or what one is served with that, that real enjoyment is not there that the real you know in order to enjoy and take full pleasure you don't need to have a good company the like a uh, a uh, uh, hidden pearl why a pearl because one has to protect them you know how pearls women know that they cover them up they don't spray perfume on them because the luster goes away hence the example of pearl as something delicate as something beautiful as something protected and something which is precious again this is the nature of woman in her fitrat there is sharam no woman likes to expose herself and when the society forces her to expose that's a great zulm that's a great exploitation of of women that takes place as a reward for what they used to do they will not hear anything vain nor sinful discourse a good fitrat person does not like to be in a company where vain talk and sinful discussion is there except salam and salam peace and peace so uh, there's a hadith from musnad ahmad where our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said near allah and deserving more rahmat of allah is the one who is first to do salam so be first to greet people first to call salam to them and teach your children also that instead of saying hi and you and what's up uh, they must also say salam when they meet someone 
And people of the right, how fortunate are people of the right? These are the successful ones, uh, and these are the people of right. They will be amidst low tree with no thorns, and bananas one upon the other. So another fruit of paradise is banana. And stretched shades and running water in abundant fruits, neither interrupted nor prohibited, and exalted thrones. Surely we created those females in special creation and have made them virgins. So everyone will be young in paradise, everyone will be untouched in paradise, and that's the description of people being there. Loving equal in age, meaning that they will be of, of the same wavelength uh, that of, of their companions. Uh, you know, we all like our companions to have the same kind of mental level and the same kind of maturity level as we have, and that will be true for the companions in paradise. For the people of the right, comprising many from the earlier, earlier generations and numerous from the later ones. And the people of the left, how wretched are the people of the left? So immediate comparison. They will be in scorching wind and boiling water and in shade of black smoke, neither cool nor pleasing. Now, now the choice is with us. The choice is with people to take the path of the garden or to take the path of the, of the fire. And this is no brainer. This is no brainer. You know what path you want to choose. Surely before they were in luxuries. Who were, who were those who were, who were in the state of luxury? These are the people who actually were in luxuries and they were in a state of denial. They worked to make their dunya as their paradise. They were people who had everything in this world from health to wealth to wisdom to resources but they spent it only for the betterment of their dunya. So, so we need to really think. We need to really look at our allocation of our time and our resources and our energy. So record, I tell you what, you record the amount of time that you spend for the betterment of Islam with all the resources that Allah has given, with all the abilities that Allah has given to you for glorification of Allah. How much time we do that? Make it our aim that we want to be people of paradise Hence, we will make a contribution in order to buy ourselves paradise by, by you know, everything that Allah has given to us in this world. And used to persist in major sins and used to say, is it that when we die and become dust and bones, shall we be indeed be raised? Those who were, who were blessed with, with a lot um, and then people who have very logical mind and people who are very rational, they claim that religion and, and, believe, and this beliefs are just myths for the lesser intelligent people. Although even the most skeptical and known atheists will conclude that all creation did not come on its own. There has to be a hand, you know, hand behind it. Imagine somebody bringing an exquisite machine in front of you, a beautiful machine, and you ask him, who made this? And he says, well, there is no creator. It came on to existence. You'll say, you must be out of your mind. And our ancestors, say first and the last, will certainly be gathered for a fixed time of a specified day, stress and reminder on this day of accountability. Then, O oh you, the, the, err, uh, the erring, the denying people, you barely will have to eat from the tree of Zakkum. Zakkum is a tree which is referred also in Surah Safat earlier, uh, which is an evil tree and, uh, and you know, where this tree will be, we don't know. We all just pray that we stay clear, well clear of this tree. We even, uh, you know, we never even have a sight of it. It's so such a horrific sight. Then fill bellies with it. Then on top of it, you will have to drink boiling water and to drink like camels suffer from the disease of over thirst. You know, signifying the intense thirst that will force people to drink something that is uh, that is so wretched. This will be their welcome on the day of reckoning. We have created you. Will you then not admit the truth? Actual denial of hereafter leads to the denial of, of the Creator. How is it possible that if Allah is there, He will not take Hisab, that He lets all the criminals go scot free? So, do you not see the sperm that you pour in creation of man? Is creation of man in our own control? Is it in the control, control of man? Nothing is in our control. And Quran reminds man how helpless, how powerless, how incapable he is, even in the simplest thing. Is it you who created it or are we the creator? Question, Quran asks this question. What is in your control? I mean, you cannot even change the creation of your children. Neither we can alter the design, nor the intelligence, nor the future of anyone. 
we have ordained death among you and we are not to be outdone from replacing you with others like you and making you grow into what you do not know. All is in the power of the one who created. He can replace anyone with a new creation or recreate man. When he can give life, uh, which is our present life, he can easily give us a new life, which is our life in the hereafter. And you certainly know <clears throat> the first creation, then why do you not reflect? If someone is in doubt as to how this can happen, then turn his attention to the fact that you were first created from nothing. From a zarra you came into existence. So it's not really difficult for Allah to recreate. Have you seen that which you sow? Is it you who grow it or are we the one who grow? How many seeds does a farmer sow? Who decides which of these seeds will germinate, will grow and become a plant and which will not? For people it's just a seed. But many factors have to be right for even for a single seed to, to germinate. And, and, and when it grows, when a seed breaks, what an extraordinary phenomenon that, it, that is. It breaks this very hard shell on crop top, the crust of the earth, and how it emerges out. So who is providing all this balance, this sustenance to the seed? If we will, we would certainly make it chef, and then you would be left wondering. So if Allah wants, nothing will happen. And you know, you will you'll throw the seed, but it will be like a cutaway field. Man can only apply effort. In the end result, end result of that is only in the hand of, 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 of Allah. Surely we are burdened with the debt. Rather, we are totally deprived. So it is a favor of Allah that he has given us, given us a reward for the very little effort that we have done. And, uh, you know, uh, and, and you know, with very little effort, he gives you the right result. Have you seen the water you drink? Where does this clean and pure water come you know, from that we drink? And this water cycle itself is such an amazing phenomenon. Is it you who have brought it down from the cloud? Are we the one who send it down? Think of how moisture rises from droplets, make clouds, and then water is carried at a temperature of minus 20 degrees, yet water doesn't freeze in the cloud. What causes it to fall at the right speed, at the right size, in a controlled manner? If we so will, we, we can make it very salty. So why do you not offer gratitude? If the ocean water were to evaporate with its salt, what kind of rain it, would it cause? Still people, you know, people drink pure water and don't say Alhamdulillah. So have you seen the fire you kindle? Fire, think about fire. What a controlled phenomena that is. It, fire needs just the right amount of oxygen. If the oxygen contents were more, if, if the oxygen contents are increased beyond a certain level, we will have raging fires, uncontrollable fires. And if the level of oxygen is very low, there will be no fire. So who maintains the right level of oxygen in this vast uh, atmosphere? Is it you who have originated the tree uh, for it or are, are we the, the originator? We have made it a reminder and a, and a benefit for the travelers. So glorify the name of your Rub, the Magnificent. So no, I swear by the setting of the star, فَلَا أُقْسِمُ بِمَوَاقِئِ النُّجُومِ The way this ayat is, uh, is, is beginning, فَلَا أُقْسِمُ The way this ayat begins is like a negation of previous notion. No, I swear by the setting of the star. No means what? Know that whatever you are thinking is false, is incomplete. Your assumptions are false. Those who want to understand the Qur'an, first they need to remove the preconceived notions. Wipe your mind clean from prejudice. Only then you will be able to truly understand the Quran. Like you have, like you have to have knowledge to see the patterns in the sky made by the stars. This is the Big Dipper. This is this is another pattern. You have to have knowledge. In similar way, one needs to to deep dive to understand the patterns of the ayahs of Quran. Indeed, it's a great oath if you know. It is surely the noble Quran, a book well guarded. Bear in mind that this is a kal who, who know, whose kalam is this? This is the kalam of the Rabb. His might, his majesty is clearly visible. That is not touched except by the purified ones. This book is protected. People cannot reach to the essence of this book unless they are near, their intentions are pure and pure. Those who purify themselves, they have true access to this book. A revelation from the Rabb of the worlds. Is it this dis is it this discourse that you take lightly? Said after going through through the azmat of Quran, it is now being questioned that despite this, you are careless about this book, you are heedless about its commandments. 
and you have and you have made it a portion that you are declaring it false so why is it not that when it which means the soul reaches the throat and you are at that and you are at that moment watching and we are closer to him than you but you do not see now quran describing this twilight zone when when, when one is leaving this world and entering into another world people are watching they cannot do anything they love people they love the one who is going they cannot do anything about it there is no medicine no technology works then why do you not if you if you are not under authority call it back if you are truthful can you call the ruh back if you have authority so in case he is from among the blessed with nearness then rest and fragrance and garden of bliss you know look this is a this time will come on all of us right and if we are among the truthful this is what is waiting for us fragrance and gardens of bliss a few years people stop their nafs so that they can make allah razi and in case he is among the people of the right then peace is for you as you are one of the people of the right but if he is one of, if if he is one of the deniers the astray then there is a welcome then there the welcome is boiling water so like they say sin in haste repent it in leisure those who want instant gratification will have to pay a very steep price and burning in the hell most surely this is certainly truth so glorify the name of your rab the supreme we begin with the next uh, surah and this is surah hadid so hadid means iron and this is again a madni surah bismillahir rahmanir rahim subbaha lillah ma fi samawati wal ard wa huwa al azizul hakim all that is in the heavens and the earth glorify allah and he is the mighty the wise everything in this universe everything that is created is doing tasbih of allah everything is glorifying allah but we sometimes don't comprehend every every creation by its existence is showing is a witness to the fact that it has a creator and it's uh, this creator is a flawless creator to him belongs the kingdom of the heavens and the earth he gives life and brings death and he has power over all things he is the first and the last and the manifest and the hidden and he is all knowing now it's very interesting that in quran whenever we come across the names of allah or the attributes of allah there's no wow in between them like samiul basir like ghafurul wadud now the reason for this could be that because allah is simultaneously aziz and hakim now here we find that there is a wow there is a wow literally means an and he is he is first and last which means that when there was nothing he was there and when there will be nothing he will still be there his being is eternal he is the one who created the heavens and the earth in 6 days then he positioned himself on the throne he knows whatever goes into the earth and whatever comes out of it and whatever descends from the sky and whatever ascends in it he is with you wherever you are and allah is watchful of whatever you do allah he is with us wherever we may be people may forget allah allah doesn't forget people Allah is hidden from us we are not hidden from him he is ever watching he is ever present to him belongs the kingdom of the heavens and the earth and to Allah all matters return why is he with us all the time because our life our existence is dependent upon his being with us if he is not with us we will cease to exist he makes the night enter into the day and makes the day enter into the night and he has full knowledge about whatever lies in the hearts so involvement of allah at all stages he is actively involved believe in allah and his messenger and spend of of what he has made made you to be successors so for those who believe and spend there is a big reward so after attribute after introducing the attributes of allah now comes a hukum now comes a command have faith have faith in his promise have faith in allah spend in his way for, of what he has given you know people often think that this is my earning this is my wealth here it is clear that all is given by allah this is his this is his amanat and what is wrong with you that you do not believe in allah while the messenger calls on you that you believe in your rab and indeed he has taken covenant with you if you are believers so here you can see the style of quran is like a reproach what's wrong with you 
why don't you spend in Allah's way? Are you unsure of the return? Are you unsure of the promise of Allah? Are you unsure of the reward that Allah has promised? He is the one who reveals clear sign, clear verses upon his servant so that he brings you out from the layers of darknesses into the light. And most surely Allah is kind, merciful to you. Quran is saying, inviting people, come to Quran. All the uncertainties, all the suspicions, all the doubts will be removed. And what is wrong with you? That you should not spend in Allah's way, while to Allah belongs the inheritance of the heavens and the earth. Not alike among you are those who spend before victory and fought. Those are much greater in rank than those who spent later and fought. Though Allah has promised the good for each, Allah is well aware of what you do. Who is there? Who will advance loan to Allah, a beautiful loan, so that he multiplies it for him, and for him is a noble reward. On the day when you will see the believing men and believing women, their lights progressing in front of them and on their right, good news for you today, gardens beneath which rivers flow to live therein forever, that is a supreme triumph. Quran is reminding of the journey to the next world. People will reach, uh, to reach um, uh, you know, the next world, people will have to cross over a certain bridge, which is called Pul Sarat, Pul Sarat. Now, Pul Sarat is not named in Quran, but we learn the name from, from the Hadith. It is stated that when people will be crossing this pull, this bridge, it will be stated that their noor will be ahead of them. And this is the noor of what? This is the noor of their iman. This is the noor of their akhlaq. This is the noor of the Quran that they had read. This noor be, will be very precious on that day. For some, this will be this will be really bright. You know, their noor will be so bright that you can see way ahead. And for some, it will be just a feeble light. They just very carefully take steps. On that, that the, the day when when the hypocrite men and hypocrite women will say to those who believe, "Wait for us, so that we so that we may have a share from your light." It will be said, "Return to your past and search for the light." Then a wall will be placed between them, which will have a gate. In its inner side there will be mercy, while towards its outer side there will be punishment. So in this worldly life, Mormon and hypocrites have the same identity. But on this day, there will be a great difference between them. The hypocrites will, will ask for some noor, and the response they will get will be really discouraging for them. They will call out to them, were we not with you? They will say, yes. But you led yourself to fall into temptation, and you waited, and you doubted, and vain desires deceived you, until Allah's command came to pass, and you were deceived about Allah by the great deceiver. Because in this world, Munafik and true Muslims have the same status, both, they are both Muslims, but one is genuine, and the other one just has a veneer of Islam. So no ransom will be accepted from you today, nor those who disbelieve. Your abode is fire, it is your patron, and what an evil resort. Has the time not come, has the time not yet come for those who believe that their hearts should be humble for the remembrance of Allah and for the truth which has come down. They must not be like those to whom the book was given before, so the time became prolonged for them, so their hearts hardened, and most of them are transgressors. Don't wait for, for, for guidance. Don't wait for, for, for doing the right things. Because as time progresses, people don't take the right action, the right decision, then the hearts harden. Know well that Allah revives the land after its death. Indeed, we have made the signs clear for you so that you may understand. Surely those charitable men and charitable women, and they lent uh, to Allah a beautiful loan. For them, it will be multiplied and for them there is a noble reward. And those who believe in Allah and His Messenger, those are the truthful and witness in the sight of your Rabb. For them shall be their reward and their light. As for those who disbelieve and rejected our verses, they shall be inmates of hell. اَيَلَمُوا أَنَّمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا لَائِبٌ وَلَحْبٌ وَزِينَةٌ وَتَفَاخُرُ بَيْنَكُمْ وَتَكَاثُرُ فِي الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَوْلَادِ And know well, that the life of this world is but a play, an amusement, a decoration, and mutual boasting amongst yourselves, and a competition of increase in rich, riches and children, is like a rain which causes vegetation to grow, pleasing the tiller. 
then it withers and you see it turning yellow, then it crumbles away and in the hereafter there is a severe punishment and forgiveness and pleasure from Allah. The life of this world is but a means of delusion. So entire life, the wheel of life described over here, how life changes. Huh? Step by step, one stage moves on seamless to the next stage and man doesn't even, doesn't even feel the change. Now, only when we look back, we realize how much change has taken place from our childhood to our teenage, to our adult, to our midlife, to our old life, and the cycle is complete. Compete each other in proceeding towards forgiveness from your Rabb and to paradise, the width of which is like the width of the sky and the earth. It will be prepared for those who believe in Allah and His Messenger. Such is the bounty of Allah, which He, which, which He, uh, which He gives, or which He gives upon whom He wills. And Allah is of immense bounty. Ma asaba min musibatin fil ardi wala fi anfusikum illa fi kitab min qabli an nabraha in nazalika alallah al yasir. No calamity befalls on the earth or on yourselves, but it is. It is in a book before we bring it into existence. Indeed, it is easy for Allah. Look, those people who run a race, they face difficulties. There will be hardship and there will also be ease. Whatever befalls on people is already written beforehand. Everything is happening according to a meticulously laid down plan. You know, there's a hadith which says the takdeer is written, the pen has been lifted and the ink has dried. Nothing is happening by chance. We are not the controller. We have severe limitations. So, so that you may neither grieve on what has escaped you, nor be exalted on what he has given you. And Allah does not love any narcissist boaster. You do your job. You apply your best effort. Result is not in your hands. Whatever result comes, accept it cheerfully. Imagine, you know, this one ayah, how much sukoon it can give to one's life. If people have iman on this one ayah, it will cure many mental illnesses. I wish I had not done that. I wish he had done that. I wish I had not. This is, all. This is where despondency sets in. This is the kalma of shaitan. When people say, I wish I had done this and this would have happened nothing the result would still have been the same so work hard plan put in your best effort then accept the results those who are misers and enjoin upon people miserliness and whoever turns away then allah is free of all needs worthy of all praise we have indeed sent our messengers with clear proof and send down with them the book and the balance so people may uphold equity and we send down iron in which there is mighty power and benefit for people and so that Allah knows the one who helps him and his messengers without seeing him. Surely Allah is strong, mighty. Messengers came to provide, to provide people with a standard, a benchmark, a balance. A balanced life is that's what they teach. Indeed, we send Nuh and Ibrahim and kept the book and kept the book and prophethood in their progeny. So some of them were on the right path and some of them were transgressors. Then we made our messengers follow them one after another. Then we sent after them Isa, son of Maryam, and we gave him Injil and placed compassion and mercy in the hearts of his followers. As for the monasticism, it was invented by them. We didn't ordain it for them except seeking pleasure of Allah, but they could not observe it as it was due. So we gave believers from among them their reward and many of them are sinners. O you who believe, fear Allah and believe in his messenger and he will give you two shares out of his mercy and make and will make for you a light whereby you will walk with it and will forgive you and Allah is most forgiving, very merciful. Last ayat of this evening, that the followers of the book may know that they do not control anything from the bounty of Allah and indeed bounty is in Allah's hand. He gives it to whom he wills, and Allah is of infinite bounty. If people are seeking the fuzzle of Allah, then Allah has kept all his fuzzle with whom? With people of Iman. 
Fazl on the last messenger along with all the other prophets a belief in our prophet sallallahu is mandatory so barakallahu lana wa lakum fil qur'an al-azim wa nafana wa iyyakum bil ayati wa zikril hakim